And straight to seven because it is more of a continuation on what we did at the end of the week than what six six is. So we're going to do six six after. <clears throat> um, I believe six six was the fundamental theorem of Kelk. Uh, which it does, but it's not. We basically already learned it, so it's not a big deal. <clears throat> So integration by substitution is essentially a reverse chain rule. So whether you've noticed it or not, all of the questions you've gotten so far have been pretty plain, straightforward, basically just regular X's. Um, but, but as you know, that, that generally isn't the case. So, I feel like I want to avoid page one. Uh, page one is pretty heavy on the notation. And I feel like if I focused on the notation, you would probably lose it quite quickly. I mean, this notation is correct, but... Um, I don't know, it's a lot. <clears throat> and I, I would rather you kind of learn substitution before we focus on this notation. Because this may help you once you have an idea of what's going on. But before you get the hang of substitution, uh, I don't want to go over that. That's it's rough. So I would like to do a problem before we get to notes. Basically just going over the idea of what we're doing which I think you probably already kind of know, but we'll just verify. That is not right. Um, no, let's make this a square. Choose somebody over here. Daniel. Da Wait, didn't you pick him Friday? Okay. Daniel. Help me out. This is from trimester one. Derivatives. likely pretty good at the chain rule by now because you've just seen it so often. Um, you'll also remember how much of a big deal it was at first too, like how confusing it was for you to try to arrange things. But the uh, general idea is that we actually did substitution. We treated that whole portion as a U. And so in your head, in your head, you do U cubed whether you write it down or not. So the derivative of u cubed would be 3u squared times du or u prime. Now, what we're going to have is, is the exact opposite. We're going to be trying to integrate <coughs> 3, 3x three squared minus 4, Now, because this is the one we just did, we should kind of already know this answer. Daniel, who's going to help you get this answer? Can you read that? I was going to say, you hope it gets written already. 3x squared minus 4 cubed. Trying to lead him. Plus C. Um, actually, that's 
it's pretty good that you remember the plus D from over the weekend. Um, I guess if you guys did your homework yesterday, you, you should remember plus D quite a bit. But I'm assuming a lot of you, I mean, a lot of you had actually turned in all of them before you left. And so you probably did zero kelp over the weekend. Uh, I would be impressed if you remember the plus C right away. Oh yeah, that's the whole point of today. <laughs> uh, I was just putting this up here because we just did the correct. <clears throat> um, what you are going to have to do is to be able to recognize when the derivative of something else is present along with it. So you guys should be really good at derivatives in your head by now. And you should recognize that the derivative of this parentheses is 6x. And so we're going to do u substitution where we're going to say let u equal this. This would be du. And then if we do u substitution, we would technically be integrating 3u squared du. And then we can just use the power rule like normal because we have a power on a single variable. <coughs> so keep in mind, the ones that we're gonna work on at first are going to be set up perfectly for you. They're not going to be disguised yet. Like this one, you would never get this as an actual question because this would be combined as an 18x. And so you'll have to kind of learn to recognize that stuff a little bit. But this is how we're gonna use u substitution. And I thought it would just work best for us to just start the problems together, go through how you should write them, whether it's in your head or write it down. Okay, on page two. There's but a bunch of examples. <coughs> now, our goal, I don't want to integrate any of these at first. I want us to go through and figure out the use substitution for all six of them. I think there's six, right? Yeah. Here we go. We need somebody. Okay, so that everybody just goes one person, I think. I'm going to have to implement my old rule pretty soon. My old rule was that you could not choose somebody one desk away. And so then eventually what happened is people would start going at a 45 degree angle because it wasn't one desk away. Sebastian, uh, it should be, no, I shouldn't say it's sort of obvious because I don't want you to feel like, I don't want you to feel dumb if you're not seeing it right away. Um, but we're using parentheses for a lot of this. So you, in your head, you have to try to look for a u, which would be like an original thing, and its derivative also be a u. So for this one, what would be the u substitution? Um, the x squared plus 1. Perfect. So we are going to set x squared plus 1 over on the side. We're going to say let u equal x squared plus 1. And then we're going to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. So the derivative of u is du. The derivative of x squared plus 1 would be 2x dx. Now we never write the dx, but it's technically there. That's like <coughs> x prime, whatever you want to call it. And if we were doing substitution, we would put the u in place of that, and we would put 2x dx, let me phrase that the other way, we would put du in place of 2x dx. So then the next line would be the integral of u squared du. Once you, get the, once you get the hang of this, it's, it's not bad at all. And in fact, a lot of students just start doing it in their head. Okay, we're going to go to B. Marble. What's he doing? I, 
literally my brain was like stuck here and I couldn't think what else would be sitting. <clears throat> Marvel, how about a B? This one's harder to see for a lot of people even though it's like, like right there. I think it's the trig part that just throws it right. There should be two things that are obviously connected though, right? Close. Four is not the derivative of cosine four x. Can you do like the neg rid of the like the sine of the like like the x four times x? Cosine of four x. I think I know what you're trying to say, and you're making it way com more complicated than needed. Um, the the four is obviously kind of like the lesser power, I guess we'll call, call it that. This is what we would just make the u. Nothing to do with the cosine, just the 4x. And I, I, it's, for whatever reason, the trig one that, it's like your brain sees them differently. We're gonna say let u equal 4x, and then four is the derivative of 4x. So the derivative of u is four, times the derivative of x. And then if I did substitution, <coughs> cosine of u, and then this 4 dx is what I would replace with du. Okay, C, D, E, and F, let's just figure out U on its own. Um, actually, I should add, are you guys at the stage where you think you can figure out U and D on your own? No, okay, let's do C. <coughs> um, Marvel, do you have something you want to pick? I can give you some guidance if you want to. I just was. Yes. So nothing to do with the square roots, actually. It's just going to be the 4x squared plus 1. That would be the u. And then the 8x is the derivative of 4x squared plus 1. Okay, good. I'm wondering, <coughs> I'm wondering if it would be a good idea today to just focus on the U portion and that's it. Nothing with the integration or resubstitution. Kind of think that I, I like that. Uh, yeah, let's just go right to D. Are you volunteering? No, I Oh, okay. But it's about, like, I just have a question about the integration of that. Well, that's what I was going to focus on tomorrow. I, I think I know what you're going to ask. You would write it as u to the one half. Okay. So it would fit the top row. Spencer, who are we choosing? <laughs> hmm. That's, uh, that seemed too automatic. No brainer. <coughs> Now, Matt has the first one that is not set up perfectly. Correct. And then the derivative of u should be 2x dx. Now, our problem is what? X dx. We don't have 2x, we just have regular x. Now, if, if something is different by a multiplier, uh, a numeric multiplier, that's not an issue. If something is different by a variable, that it, we, can't, we can't adjust that. We can't manipulate that. But anytime it's just a numeric difference, we 100% can manipulate the problem to make it work for us. There's two ways we can do this. One method 
is to make it a 2x. You want to do it. And then if I multiply the inside by 2, I could multiply the outside by 1 half. Because it doesn't matter whether a numeric multiplier is inside, outside, it's still the same. And so if I multiply by both of them, it's technically not changing it. So that's one method. We can make it the correct multiplier. The other method, which will work identically but look different, <coughs> is that since we only have regular x, we are going to make this what the heck? We are going to make this say regular x. We're going to divide both sides by 2. So we would have 1 half du equals x dx. And then since this is what is present in the problem, the substitution you would do would be to replace x dx with 1 half times du. Maybe I, uh, I take it back. I don't know if I like the idea of going through just new substitutions first. I was going to try it different this year, but I feel like we're going to run into too many issues. Do you want me to finish this problem with you? No, I'll go back and we'll just do the other three. We'll just finish them all. Um, I was expecting this to take us a little bit of time. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to rush through it at all. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to put u in place of that. So it will say u cubed. But now instead of me writing x dx, I'm going to write a half times du. And if we have a numeric multiplier anywhere, we can bring it out front if it, it D's before us. So this 1 half, we're going to pull out front. So this is going to say 1 half u cubed du. Are we OK with that part? OK. Now, I'm going to integrate the u cube. And it's going to be u to the fourth divided by 4 plus d. Now, this 1 half technically multiplies to both things. But when you multiply a c, it just still stays a c. Right. Oh, she's not here. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. So we would have one eighth u to the fourth plus c. <clears throat> but at the very beginning of the problem, we started with x's, so we have to finish with x's. So we would resubstitute. And we put the x squared plus 2 back in place of u. Uh, it's, once you get the system down, it's not bad at all. It doesn't feel much different than the easy parts. Now, if you're... I guarantee some in here you get extremely annoyed by having to write all these little steps. Um, and so what usually happens is some people will get to the point where they just don't do use substitution on paper. They do it in their head. Like when they are looking at a problem, they look at this as the whole thing cubed. <laughs> And they recognize that this is kind of the derivative. And so then they would put in the 2 and the half. And they would just do the integration straight from here to here. And if you can, totally fine, totally allowed on the AP test. They do not require you to do u substitution. 
But if you do use substitution, do know that you have to write it correctly. It's kind of the annoying step. Okay. Um, should we go back up and finish the other three? Sure. I think I want to abandon the idea of all the original parts. Okay. Uh, I don't remember who we're on. Matt, we're on you. Are you in? Uh, Seth. Seth. Can you help me integrate something squared? There you go. Yeah, so I mean that's all there is to it. And then this is the final answer, sort of. Like, this is integrated, but we our original problem started with x's, so we have to finish with x's. <coughs> and so then we re-substitute back. We're just using the use substitution so that our brain isn't trying to do too many things at once. Like, we're doing the power rule here. That's all we were doing. And so we did use substitution so it looked more straightforward. So should I fully expect to be like deathly ill by this weekend? Like people are doing like sounding like death? What's the state? How do you do you just get rid of like the DU after the integral? Oh, good question. Yes. It it hundred percent feels like you just get rid of it. But um, if we remember when we were doing derivatives? When you do derivatives, you just kind of like magically put the du at the end anyway. And so if you're going backwards, it goes away, coming back to what you started with. So it, it feels kind of strange because you just get rid of something, but it had to be there for you to be able to integrate. Um, Seth. Um, I want you to pick somebody you have never called on before. I don't think I have. I think most times I've just chosen Spencer and Bobble. <laughs> I think he's right about that. Yeah, you're, you're All right. not wrong. There, you're consistent. You're consistent. Okay. Maggie, <laughs> how about uh, integrating cosine of u? Okay. Sort of. Plus C. There we go. Looks like I'm going to have to take about a half a week to get you guys back in the habit of plus C. Okay. Now what do we do from here? Uh, plug you in. Okay. So then the final answer should be? Sine of 4x plus C. Perfect. Now one thing that bugs me is, is a lot of times they're kind of like, I don't want to say lenient. But like, I kind of wish they would use parentheses more often on the trade ones to make it clearer what's the angle part. Um, because this one, I definitely have seen it written before, sine of 4x times 4, and they, they don't really do a great job of making it feel like what's clear. So I'll, I'll do my best too, but uh, I can always clarify for that if you need it. Okay, C. Uh, Finn, you haven't been called on for a long time. Partially because I didn't have, which is a good explanation. <clears throat> so this one, um, I didn't really do much with when we were doing the UDU. <coughs> do you think you could help me write what the next line should say? So basically, to do the U substitution. We figured out what u should be equal to, but how do I like put it in there now? <coughs> we found that u was going to be the 4x squared plus 1, and that was mainly because the 8x that was outside of there is the derivative of 4x squared plus 1. 
So where would I put the U? Let's start with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Well, it's supposed to be the plan for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Well, the plan failed. Yeah, well, it started freezing. Because it's above freezing and it's all melting. Okay, so Finn, what I was mainly looking for was the 4x squared plus 1 was inside the square root. And so then that's where we would put the u is inside the square root. So we would say square root of u. And then the du was those two things. And so I would replace those two things with du on the outside. Could you also say u to the one half power? That would most likely be there, but you could do this in two steps, or if you recognized it right away, you could just do it right away. But yeah, we, we generally never integrated square root symbols because we tried changing everything to a half power. So if you recognize that right away, go for it. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with like doing it in steps and trying not to do everything in your head. <clears throat> um, how about integrating u to the one half? Yeah. How about that? Um, Correct. Uh, and then divide by 3 over 2, which we would write as 2 thirds. Plus C. I, did, wait, I think I saw somebody had their hand up. Was it just to answer that or was it for a question? Okay. And then we're going to substitute back the original information for U. Um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like an afterthought, and I, I maybe I shouldn't even like try to present it as an afterthought, because there's a lot of times on test questions students will forget to replace that with the X, original information. Okay. How are we, how about the bottom two? Feel like you could attempt them? Do you want me to help you with the U portion first? Okay. On E, when I look at E, um, the derivative of 4x squared plus 3 is very much going to be 8x. And that's kind of close to 8x, the difference between a number multiplier. So U would be 4x squared plus 3. Like, I've gotten to the point where it's, it's kind of a automatic, where I look to see if the derivative of something else is present within the problem. Because that's how the u substitution works. And that's going to be most of the integrals, to be honest. So that's the u substitution. On f, I sort of see the same thing. The 7 minus 2x cubed would be u, because du would be negative 6x squared. And if you guys are going to get stuck at some place, that's fine. I just thought it might be a good idea for you to try the start on your own. And if you can do the whole problem, great. If you can't, that's fine. Just do the parts you can. Take, take whatever, five minutes? Should be enough time to at least get them started. Don't feel like you have to be able to picture how to do the whole problem at once. Just go little by little.
uh, personally, I'm a fan of writing in the correct <coughs> du so that I don't have to do so much division and extra step, oh, extra step over here. But it doesn't matter which way you like doing. is you're stuck just because you weren't thinking of how this should be written. You don't want a sixth power on the bottom. <coughs> yeah. We've only learned how to do power rules, trig, and natural log. This wasn't a natural log. You don't have to, but I like to do it so that it doesn't so that I'm focused on the parts of the integrand. But it, it doesn't matter how you like that. give you the step or not yet. So should I leave it right here and let you try to figure that one out first? Yeah, I'll take that. I'll finish the first one because my guess is once you got here then it went quick. Your goal is to try to rewrite everything and how we know how to work. So write the root of the power. <laughs> it does. The answers look horrible. Almost all the integration answers look terrible. Most. Well, I have like everything. 
So here's what it looks like when you first learn integration. It looks like the du turns into a plus c. If you want to remember it that way, go for it. Um, <laughs> the straightforward answer is that once you integrate, the du goes away completely. It, the du has to be there to be able to integrate. But once you integrate, it's no longer there. It's, it's just like when you take the derivative, the chain rule is at the end of the derivative, but there was no du at the beginning of the problem. For the negative one six, yeah, how would you get the negative one uh, six? Negative, the three and the six reduce to one and two. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, if you wrote, if you wrote negative three forty seconds, that's sort of correct. It's just not simplified. Uh, it also it also would be fully correct if you wrote the parentheses on the denominator as a fifth power. Um, same with this one, you could write it as the cube root of that parentheses to the seventh. That'd be fine as well. How how are we feeling on a scale of a one to five on this topic for right now? Okay. Okay. So here's here's what I would recommend. Um, I would recommend going to the homework and just starting completely. Mm, shoot, how should I say this? Skip trig ones for now, because you'll see tomorrow we're doing a mostly trig, and trig can be disguised. So we did a trig one today. So if you feel like you know how to do a trig one, like if it's just sine or cosine, go ahead. But otherwise, avoid trig for right now. <coughs> the main focus is figuring out what the u substitution should be. 